Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? This is Hassan Sharik, Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant based out of Mississauga, Canada. Um, I, I have been receiving a lot of queries uh, about uh, Canadian visit or visa. So I thought I'll make a quick video and brief you guys about uh, the Canadian visitor visa. Um, so first up, what is a visitor visa? Now, a visitor visa uh, for Canada in specific and for any country for that matter is granted to a foreign national who would want to come to Canada and stay in Canada for a short time and then, then go back to their country of origin or country of residence. Um, in most cases, Canada grants a multiple entry visa. So uh, by a multiple entry visa, what is meant is that once you are granted this visa, um, there is there is an expiry date uh, and a lot of times that expiry date is the expiry date of, of your passport, the, the passport that you used to apply for the visitor visa, whatever is the expiry date on your passport, usually you'll get the visa till that date. Um, uh, with the multiple entry option, what happens is that although in your visa application you mentioned that you want to come to Canada on certain specific dates for a specific purpose, but once you make that first visit and you leave Canada, you can again come to Canada for a short term visit. Um, when you're granted a visitor visa uh, and when you do your landing in your first, uh, whenever you land, usually you're allowed to stay in Canada for up to six months from that date, um, depending on, on your passport validity, as I mentioned. And also the fact that if the officer on border, um, the CBSA officer, Canadian Border Service Agency officer, uh, does not clearly mention that you have to leave by this specific date, then you're allowed six months. Um, and if you leave, whenever you leave, say you apply for a visa, or you intend to travel in say January of a year, um, you arrive in Canada for 10, 15 days, you stay in Canada, and then you leave back, um, you will, <clears throat> Once you leave back, uh, you can return back again anytime if it is a multiple entry visa. And next time, whenever you land back, um, again, you're allowed six months. Now, sometimes there is confusion that if you, um, you've been in Canada on a visitor visa and then you leave uh, Canada, would you be required to stay outside of Canada for a certain time period before you can re-enter? No, there's no such thing. So say for instance, you leave Canada on, on the 15th of January, um, you go back to your country of uh, um, original residence, um, you stay there for on 16th January and 17th January and, and on 18th January again, you return back to Canada, it's absolutely fine. Since you've left Canada, um, you've made an exit out of it, um, you can come back after two days, three days, or four days. Um, visitor visa, a lot of people um, have this confusion if they can, um, once they have a visitor visa, they can be in Canada and they can, they, can, um, they can work on this visa or they can have it converted into something of a permanent residence or a work permit. So keep in mind, uh, um, a visitor visa is only granted for, for a temporary visit. Um, there has to be a temporary visit purpose. It does not give you any work rights. It does not, um, there is no direct uh, pathway or conversion stream from a visitor visa to a work permit or like a permanent residency. Um, so you're not allowed to work while you're in Canada on a visitor visa. Although I must say that there are sometimes these practices where people um, find such jobs and employers offer such jobs which are on cash so kind of some dodgy things happen um, but that's not legally allowed now why would somebody apply for a visitor visa uh, probably this is something I should have mentioned in the beginning of the video um, um, so why somebody applies and why somebody is granted a visitor visa is important because that might actually um, <clears throat> remove some of the confusions that people have. So keep in mind that um, there's no one specific reason for which a visitor visa is granted. The whole purpose is that somebody needs to be in Canada for a, for a short term um, to fulfill some kind of obligation uh, or for a purpose um, and they submit an application, they provide supporting documents um, and based on that um, the visa officer, Canadian visa officer, approves that and allows them an entry. 
Uh, now, what could be these reasons? And this is just a few examples. So say, for instance, somebody has their close family in Canada. Um, maybe it is, it, is, um, it is someone's children who are based in Canada as permanent residents or citizens, or even for that matter, studying in Canada or working in Canada on a work permit. Or you have a sibling uh, in Canada. Uh, and you would want to come to Canada, spend some time with your 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 relative. So, you know, you might apply for a visitor visa uh, that you intend to be in Canada for a month or two and then return back. Um, then there could be somebody who's looking at uh, traveling uh, across Canada, you know, traveling um, for sightseeing, um, just for the tourism purpose. Um, so that could be one reason, you know, Canada is a beautiful country. Um, coast to coast, uh, there's a lot of beautiful cities, um, there's a lot of beautiful landscape, there's a lot of activities and festivals that happen, events that happen, so you could be, you could be just here for, for, for tourism and sightseeing. Um, then there could be business reasons, uh, like somebody who's working for, for a company, um, that company um, sends the, the staff member over for a meeting with, with the Canadian company, so you know, you, you're coming here, or you have your own business and you want to sell your products to some companies in Canada and you would want to meet with them or you want to buy some goods from, from Canadian companies, you know, uh, so it could be business reasons and you're applying that, you know, um, you could be attending a trade show, like a training or something of that sort. So the reasons could be, could be, could be many, but the whole point is that you are applying for a short term entry into Canada. Uh, you will do that particular activity and then you leave back. Now, how to apply? Um, so to apply for a visitor visa, there, uh, there are, I'd say, two major uh, methodologies. One is an online application, and then there's a paper application as well. Um, um, for, for clients that I get to have at, at, at my immigration law firm, uh, and for a lot of other people now, people prefer the online application. Uh, it is much easier. Uh, but you could still apply through paper. Um, you're not supposed to apply at the Canadian High Commission you know, or embassy in any country. There, there is the v VFS, um, the Canadian Visa Application Centre. So you fill up your application and you submit it over there. So if you're applying online, what you do is that uh, whatever the required forms, you fill those forms, you provide the supporting documentation based on your purpose of visit, um, and you submit that online. Um, now, usually there is no interview for a Canadian visitor visa, unlike the US visitor visa. Um, so you submit your application that is reviewed by officers and based on that submission, they make a decision if they are going to grant you a visitor visa or not. Um, um, what documents are required? Now, this is again a common question a lot of people ask. Um, Keep in mind that the, the actual documents vary based on what your purpose of visit is. There's, there's no one specific um, list of documents, but generally you are uh, required to fill a few forms where you provide your personal details, your contact details, your family details. Um, um, then you are required to submit um, uh, scans of your current passport. You provide if you have travel history, you provide that you are required to provide a bank statement showing that how much money you have available for the particular trip that you're planning on doing and otherwise as well. And But there's no set amount for a bank statement that, you know, if you have $10,000, you'll be granted a visa or if you have $30,000, you'll be granted a visa. It's actually um, a holistic review of your economic and financial ability that the officer is doing. So they'll have a look at uh, uh, what is your source of income. So if you have very good salary, that's a very positive thing. You have a secure job, that's a very positive thing. If, um, if you have a good bit of money in your bank account, which should be, at, at minimum, it should be enough to cover the, uh, the proposed cost of your visa to visa trip. And there must be something on top of it as well. And if you have other assets in your name, like maybe you have a house in your name, you have uh, real estate, you have um, you have generally have a have a good economic standing that helps. So all those documents you have to submit that um, you have to submit documents relating to the purpose of your visit. 
So as I mentioned that there could be different reasons. If you are if you're looking at traveling for say tourism purpose, then you have to provide details in terms of your past travel history, uh, like which countries have you have you traveled to in the past to show that you know travel is something that you regularly do. Tourism is is something that you regularly do. Um, you'll also have to provide things like maybe hotel bookings, the different um, activities that you're going to do in Canada. Maybe you have uh, you want to visit the Wonderland here in in, in Toronto. Um, bookings for that and all that sort of are probably a, um, an itinerary where you'll say that okay, so these three days in Toronto, I'll be doing this. Then I'll go to Alberta and I'll visit Banff, and then I'll go to Vancouver and do this, and and then fly out. Um, and then um, if it is if, if the purpose is different if you're going to attend a conference here in canada then you will be probably looking at um, a registration a booking um, at, at at that conference if you are um, maybe visiting family you'll get an invitation letter from the family proof of uh, relationship with them so this is this is in 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 um, an overall um, uh, list of documents that you might need uh, but it it sort of varies between application to application and individual to individual now a lot of people sometimes ask as to how much money should i have uh, and as i've already sort of alluded to this there's no specific requirement that you must have this much money in your bank account you must have at least enough funds uh, that you can justify that, uh, say for instance, your proposed uh, travel to Canada uh, will cost you five thousand um, dollars, and 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 the funds in your account um, should at least be five thousand dollars. I'd say about seven to eight thousand um, dollars, so that you can justify that to the officer that I have funds which 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 are going to cover my my trip cost. But then if you're if you're being sponsored by your company where they're sending you for a meeting, you know, um, probably uh, they're providing some documentation that they will be um, covering the funds and you might not need that much money in your, in your account. A lot of people then um, ask and there is confusion that if you get a visitor visa, um, you can you can convert it uh, into a work permit or something of that sort. Um, keep in mind that as I mentioned in the beginning that the visitor visa is specifically for, for a purpose that you come to Canada and, and, and you visit um, for a short term. Uh, once that's done, you, you're, you're supposed to or you're expected to leave Canada. Um, or at this time, uh, when this video is being recorded in, in, in August 2023, there is a policy uh, which was actually introduced during the COVID time, but then it was, it was uh, continued that if you come to Canada uh, and if you're able to find a job offer uh, by an employer which is which is uh, uh, which has an LMI a labor market impact assessment for it as well you are allowed to apply for a work permit while being in Canada but a visitor visa does not itself convert into a work permit um, uh, you have to find uh, a job uh, an employer and there's a bit of a paperwork that is required. Also, if you come in uh, to Canada on a work permit, there is no direct pathway towards uh, permanent residency. For permanent residency, you have to fulfill all the requirements in terms of your education, your language ability, and all other details um, to apply for permanent residency. So these things don't really uh, help for that. Sometimes there are people who are looking at investing in Canada um, and, and opting for the business immigration streams. Now, if that is the case, um, the uh, a lot of provincial nomination programs, which are entrepreneur programs for business immigration, they tend to um, uh, recommend or or they um, they they suggest that um, such applicants uh, should first make an exploratory visit to Canada uh, on a visitor visa. Um, see around the place, uh, maybe meet with a few companies which are offering some business um, um, investment ideas or look for possible businesses uh, and then 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 make make a decision. And this exploratory visit on a visitor visa actually gives you certain points for your business investment stream as well. So that's there. But then again, uh, it's not just the business visit which will qualify you for that business investment um, Canadian PR program or immigration program. 
So that's all on the topic of Canadian visitor visa. I've tried to cover quite a quite a bit on various aspects that I thought uh, a lot of people um, have their concerns and queries about. Um, uh, if there are still some aspects that um, you have some confusion about, you're more than welcome to post that in the comment section and myself and my staff will, will try to answer those. Um, sometimes people ask very case specific things and, and, and until unless we have complete background, it's, it's difficult to answer answer on, on those matters. So for that, you have to book a paid consultation uh, with myself. You can find the link for that in the description of the video. Um, as an immigration consultant licensed here in Canada running an immigration consulting firm, we provide various services for people interested in Canadian immigration. Um, visit a visa if you're interested, we can definitely uh, represent you in, in your application. Um, but because this is this is um, um, immigration consulting services for a fee, so you'll have to book a paid consultation. Uh, a lot of people send these general queries uh, and asking these questions. We are not in a position to answer on that. Um, you can go on my website. There's a book consultation link. You can book a consultation over there or write to us uh, and we will um, provide you a quote um, and, and represent you in your immigration application to Canada.